Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to another review. There's another paid request, this time for Chaz. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, reactions, reviews, commentaries, whatever it may be, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 2007-2008 film Bone Dry, which was a film I had never heard of before, but it has Luke Goss, he was one of the, the main villain, or pretty much the main villain in Blade 2. And he was also in some of those Death Race sequels, and he's done a lot of, like, direct video work, too. And there are times I could do it. Like, I liked him in Blade 2. I liked him. I didn't mind him in some of those Death Race sequels, to be honest. And he does fine here. You know, sometimes his accent, it's American or it's British, it seems like kind of differentiates at times whenever it wants to. I thought he still did fine. D. Wallace from Cujo and E.T. She's in it for a bit. A little bit at the beginning and like one little random bit at the end. I mean, she's probably in it for five minutes total as a waitress at this diner. Uh, Lance Hendrickson is in it. I thought he did a rather good job. And pretty much, it's in the Mojave Desert. Luke Goss goes, he goes in this diner, he comes out, one thing leads to another, he's been knocked out and left in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And this guy, Lance Hedrickson, messes with him, screws with him, and puts him in these situations kind of like Saw, kind of like other stuff. Where he scares Luke Goss with a sniper rifle, tossed him through a walkie talkie, tells him to keep going north, here's some water, but oh, it's salt water, here's some salt pills, I want you to take them, oh, here's a cactus, you've been tied to it, now try to get out of it. Uh, there's a bit where his ear gets shot off. There's a bit where he's buried up to his neck in the in the dirt. Granted, you don't see a lot of sunburn on the guy, which is weird. I mean, there's dialogue about sunburn, but you don't really see any sunburn on the guy. And believe me, with this kind of stuff, you would get sunburned quick. You would be more red than, <laughs> than that. You'd be more red than that. Right there on the hard target laser disc. You look like a cherry bomb. And it's kind of what it, how it goes for the rest of the movie. I mean, I don't know if you can call it Cat and Mouse. It's just Lance Sanderson pretty much torturing Luke Goss. Luke meets a couple people along the way. This one guy, sort of a hippie kind of guy. Later on, these two guys who are smugglers. One of them is Tiny Lister Jr., may he rest in peace. Debo from Friday. Zeus from No Holds Barred with Hulk Hogan. But that's kind of how it goes for most of it. And I guess... I didn't mind the film for a couple reasons, but for other people, I guess it depends how long you're willing to go to see one guy mess with another guy through the Mojave Desert. Again, for me, I thought Luke Goss did a decent enough job. I'm a sucker for Lance Henriksen. He's got a great voice. Uh, at the ending, I thought it was interesting. I know some may feel like they see the ending coming I didn't so maybe I feel like an idiot but I actually thought it was kind of refreshing very refreshing that's kind of one of the things that made me like the film even more because it made what happened uh, interesting I mean the the cinematography of the film at first it begins with this very heavy orange haze look like a filter thankfully they ease up on that for the rest of the movie which is fine 
It tries to do some artistic moments, these little hallucinations that Luke Ross starts, Luke starts having, like dreams of Lance shooting him, or even himself shooting him. Or when he's trapped in the dirt, he'll think like Lance is behind him, or that Lance started fire near him, and he's freaking out, or... I go through it without giving away the ending. I mean, there may there's stuff that people won't find realistic. Not just the fact that wow, he goes through all this damn sun and you know no sunburn. Also, it seems like after a while he'd be just so dead tired. But then, like when he fights the two smugglers, like this is after he's been. I'm trying to think all that happened. This is after he's been tied to a hood of a car and been he had to break his own finger and then he was dragged by the car and he was bit by snake and he sucked the venom out and again his ears been shot, he's barely had any water, he's gone through the desert. Like you have to be dead fucking tired. And yet, he's able to fight these two guys, including Tiny Lister Jr., who's not a fucking small guy. is Debo from Friday. Yet, he has the strength. He hasn't eaten anything, or... He ate, like, a little bit of thing. But I'm like... Dude, how the fuck... Uh, how the hell you don't have enough strength to do that? <laughs> to fight these... Okay... But, I, if you don't give a crap with Luke Goss or Lance Harrison, I don't think you'll get anything out of it. Like I said, I like... Luke Goss, I think, is fine. Lance... is almost like trying to be a Hitcher quality to it, although the Hitcher is much better. Although, I'll watch this 50 times over the Hitcher remake. The Hitcher remake, to me, is one of the worst films I've ever seen. It's one of the worst remakes I've ever seen. I hate that movie with a passion. But. I'm going to spoil the ending. This is a big reason why I didn't mind the film. So. 3, 2, 1, pressing. The spoiler button. I don't have a button. I don't know how to do that shit. Pressing the spoiler button. Actually, that's punching it. Pressing the... You know, ding. You know. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Starting now. After more things happen... Even Lane says, By Lady Luck, you're able to make it where I needed you to go. And... Luke Goss finds a message and then underneath there's skulls there's bones you're like what's going on here you find out Luke Goss is the villain and Lance is the good guy because Luke Goss was hired by someone to eliminate Lance and his family because they saw too much even though Lance even says, we didn't see anything, you got the wrong family. Killed Lance's wife in the swimming pool, killed the kid, shot Lance, buried them all in the desert. But the bullet kind of ricocheted whatever off of Lance's skull, so he was still alive. And for two years, been trying to remember and plan this out. And thus what this big old plan of revenge I thought there was a nice scene between Lance Henriksen and Luke Goss where Lance is just giving his all speaking to Luke about how you got the wrong family and you buried us in the desert left us the you know like we were nothing and you see a good range of emotions from Lance Henriksen's character. 
that this is a guy who lost his family over something he didn't even do, and you know this is, whole thing's been payback against this. I don't know if you want to call him a hitman, Luke Goss, or just an enforcer. I know it's been two years, but I still find it a bit hard to believe that Luke Goss would not remember this guy. Like his face, his name, Jimmy. I mean, he did. He used the same name, Jimmy, and he's shown his face before. The fact that Luke doesn't remember this guy... He does say, I don't remember. And Lance goes, I do. But I guess... That kind of... There are people that have done that. There are people that have done that where they beat one person, even as important as that, and two years later they don't remember a thing. It shows how little Luke Goss really cares about anybody else. It shows how little regard he has for... For stuff. It is one of those scenes that's a bit confusing though. Where. That hippie guy. And spoilers. He thought that was Jimmy. And chokes him and kills him. But then when later finds out he was wrong. He goes to the guy and he apologizes. I don't know why a guy who's willing to kill a kid and a wife and a guy two years ago, but he's sorry that he killed someone who was the wrong guy. I don't know, if you're a guy that is willing to murder a kid, you're not someone who's going to apologize for killing someone else. That's almost like that's put in there just to fool the audience and to, until the reveal happens. So I do think there's a bit of hiccups in the script on that front. But overall I did like the reveal. Because, you know, Lance... It's very understandable that he would be thought of as the villain. Because, I mean, he was the villain in Hard Target. He was the villain in Stone Cold. He was the villain in quite a few other movies. Why wouldn't he be a villain? Do we just, like, make sense? So you're using that to toy with the audience and make them think one way. And then, again, that reveal was interesting to me enough to the point that, okay, it made this a movie I think of afterward. And go, okay. Like, the way things play out just made the movie a bit more interesting than it would have been if it was just a straightforward Luke was the good guy, Lance was a bad guy, and just very basic face value type of story. <clears throat> now the director, I don't know what else the director's done. I think there are moments, like I said, little moments of the script that I think could have been tightened up. I think the movie could have been tightened up a bit. I think an hour and 40 minutes is a bit too long for this type of story. I think 20 minutes could have been shaved off of it. Also, there's bits here and there. Like, again, this is super spoilers. Lance Harrison kills Luke Goss. The, the truck can't run, so he walks off. And then it'll randomly, it randomly cuts to D. Wallace at the diner. And someone comes in. How was it? And D. Wallace, oh, just another day. I just maybe to signify that she had given a phone number to Luke Goss and she never going to get that phone number call, you know, get that phone call. But it just still feel like a random... Almost like, hey, audience, remember D. Wallace is in this movie? And it cuts back to Lance still walking through the desert. If it was somehow he's walking and then it cut to he got a ride or something and it was to that diner and Lance Hamilton walks in, it's like, I'll need a hospital, can you call an ambulance? 
how they D-Walls talk to him, and then Lance maybe takes his hat off, and a cup of coffee, and talks nice to her. I think that would have been a better way to wrap things up. But just Lance walk in, then boom, cut the D-Walls, just saying, Ah, oh, you know, same old, same old. You know, same as any other day. They cut back to Lance Wall. It just seemed abrupt, random. It, that really bit a uh, nice flow to it. And like I say, it's it is kind of a torture movie. Not even kind. Of, it is a torture movie. Granted, the fact that it takes place in the desert and there are. There's a bit more to the story compared to a lot of the Saw sequels, at least to me. Maybe not to you, but to me. It's a film that I don't know if I would ever watch again, but it was it was something I didn't mind. You know, it got a lot of bad reviews. A lot of people, if I, I don't think I found another review that liked the movie. But I'm being easy on it because I'm like, Go watch some of the films I've seen, like Razor Teeth and Feeders and Feeders 2 and even like Saw, Jigsaw and Saw 7, the final chapter. So it's like, I would rather watch this because at least the two actors I didn't mind, at least the story, I liked the, the twist they had in it. Like I said, I needed to shave about 20 minutes down. The director, I guess some of those hallucinations, a bit trying to be too artsy, but he's not really a director capable of that. They even do one of those, the dream within a dream <laughs> moments. I'm like, really? I mean, leave that to Wes Craven, not to you. But overall, I would say it was because of the twist, because of the actors, it was more interesting than not for me. So overall, I thought it was a, at least a tie waster. I mean, bone dry. I've seen much, much worse films. But also, I'm a big Lance Henriksen fan. I'm a sucker for him. I mean, he's in one of my all-time favorites. Right there, front and center. Well, not front and center, but right there, Lance Henriksen. Big fan of the guy. So, nice to see this, because I had not seen it before. So, with that said... Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.